you positive heads out there thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the positive head podcast where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness which creates and animates all things now of course understanding this powerful truth is one thing Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take about a minute and a half to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting. The first longtime stellar supporter of this show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm sincerely passionate about promoting is Purium. It's no mystery that bringing your mind, body, and spirit into balance is necessary if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. So if you've been looking for a way to easily get organic superfoods into your system every day with a simple plan that can help you reestablish a healthier foundation and relationship with food, like I was doing before I found Purium, I highly recommend going to positivehead.com forward slash transformation and checking out the videos and interviews there where I dive deeply into discussions explaining why I take these products every day. And should you ultimately end up on ishoppurium.com to purchase any of their 50 plus amazing superfood products, be sure to use the code positivehead, all one word, for a 25% discount. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a terrific Tuesday here in the studio as I record, and today I would like to talk about love. You ever heard of love? I'm sure you've heard a rumor, had an inkling about this topic at some point. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Has there ever been a person who hasn't ever considered love in all of humanity? Like, is it not like the hottest, most in vogue topic (laughs) there's ever been or will be? I think there's a good reason for that since that's the reason for it all. All the trying hardship, all the variations of experience all come back to love and that's the reason for any of it. It is synonymous with God or source, uh, I believe, just another way of trying to put a name on on what it is, right? So, I'm going to talk about that very interesting, fascinating topic a little bit. We talk about that topic pretty much all the time in one way shape or form, but in this case, you know, it was it was actually inspired today by um a quote that a, a dear friend posted and um yeah, so it just kind of led me down a rabbit hole of thinking and you know, it was right before I was going to record today and hadn't figured out what I was going to record and like I like to do I like to uh, be inspired by what bubbles up and if all of a sudden something sort of catches my eye or catches my heart or mind or what have you, then I'll realize, oh, this is the topic that wants to come through today. Okay, 
let's do it. So um, before I jump into that, though, uh, let's take a moment and read a review on iTunes. Uh, you guys know, speaking of love, I love, love, love when you take the time to uh, review on iTunes. It not only helps us to reach new people, but can definitely helps to fuel my fire to continue uh, this labor of love. Now I'm realizing how much I actually use the word love because... <laughs> So let's see here. Um, This title is Super High Vibes and Conscious Content, 1111. That's the title by Lathadius. I've listened to several uplifting and inspiring podcasts through the years, and Positive Head is now my new favorite. Super elevated and intellectually stimulating. There's just this vibration that feels so pure and tapped in, so I keep coming back for more. And each time that I do, I have another uplifting and highly synchronistic experience. In a world that is filled with illusions of density and darkness, it's an absolute pleasure to go beyond the veil and connect in this way with such powerfully positive people, reminding me that we truly are the ones we have been waiting for. Big ups to Brandon and his team for being such a bright beacon of positive news and elevated content, and to all of us P-heads and positive people who weave our collective vibration in growing numbers, awakening in the dream together, and collectively making the world a little bit better with every passing dream. Wow, that's so... uh Beautifully and poetically written, Lathadius. Um, wow, very, very inspiring. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of that uh, juicy goodness you're sending our way. And it's funny that you bring that up. Uh, you, you know, you said in a world that is filled with illusions of density and darkness. And uh, I was um, having some some dialogue before recording this morning with a, a newer friend or, um, you know, an old new friend, uh, if you will, right? Reconnecting with a soul that I'm meant to connect with who's really, really powerful and has been having a lot of multidimensional experience and dealing with a lot of density and darkness in that process as a gatekeeper and, you know, um, sort of going through all of uh, darkness and density that arose in them through past trauma and then sort of tapping into some of that that stuff that um, appears to exist out there uh, in the multidimensional world and, and, you know, multidimensional realities. And that's what, you know, our conversation went down this rabbit hole and that's what it ultimately landed on from her who's had firsthand experience dealing with like some really dark energy. She said exactly what Lathadia said here in a world that is filled with illusions of density and darkness. It's all ultimately illusory. Love is the thing that is the truth that you know in all the darkness is actually happening for love right it's like you can't know that what you are unless you know that what you are not so if love is all there is source is all there is and there's nothing else but it is love well then that all of a sudden means nothing because there's no contrast right so in order for um source to know herself uh she chose to uh create those illusions of darkness and separation so that uh, after experiencing those, you can then come back to love, right? Come back and say, ah, okay, I've went down that rabbit hole. I've seen the darkness that it's given me some perspective so I can actually uh, know myself uh, in a way that I couldn't without it. So it's actually a very loving thing from the greatest and grandest perspective, this idea of darkness. And when you start tapping into that truth and knowledge and understanding, it's all happening for love. You can really begin to weep at the beauty of the entire human um, drama and experience and all the darkness that's transpired and all the incredibly brave souls who have signed up for dark experiences so that they can give source that experience, that contrast and in service to love, right? They did it in service to love. Isn't that like so incredibly empowering and just like beautiful? What a like beautiful love story, right? And the ultimate love story is with yourself. Uh, that that's the thing that a lot of people are missing and and actually this person that i was communicating with and connecting with this morning um this incredible bright beacon of just goodness um i've seen her actually uh, post a lot of stuff about uh, you know over the years uh, i've i've followed her work uh, on you know and her her 
social media, and she has posted a lot about this idea of twin flames and how, you know, and soulmates and how we all get so hung up on that sort of thing. And really, uh, the end sort of realization, the ultimate truth is you are your own soulmate. You are your own twin flame. The one that you're really stuck with for eternity to fall in love with is who? You, right? You are it. Anyone that does come in as a reflection of that self-love, it's going to be transient to some degree. Yes, you're going to have very, very, very special connections uh, at different times in your life as Wayne Dyer. And we're actually going to share a clip for him from him in a little bit. Uh, he talks about, he he explains it in a, a beautiful way. He's like, you know, look, your your life, your existence is like a, a bus uh, or a train where you, you, you people get on at a certain stop and they may ride with you for quite some while and then they get off the bus. And maybe at some point they even get back on again. At the end of the day, there's only one person that you're always on the bus with and that's you. And the bus driver, perhaps, they're there a while, but then you get off the bus and you take another bus. And now, so, right, it's it's always you. It always comes back to you. And that's why self-love is everything. And this this dear friend posted, um, I believe it's a Led Zeppelin quote. I, I looked it up. I could tell it was probably a song quote and it, Led Zeppelin came up. So, um, and, and the quote was, it's been a long time since the book of love. I can't count the tears of a life with no love. Carry me back, carry me back, baby, where I come from. And, you know, where do you come from? Love, yes, I want to be carried back to love. But the big thing here that so many people, and then I sense with this person, uh, perhaps as a possibility, knowing them very well, I know that that romantic relationship has been uh, a struggle and, and at times and, and self-love and, and all of us have our different levels of this sort of uh, unfolding like I always say the number one thing we're all here to learn is self-love and so when you talk about carry me back carry me back where I come from but it's not a place to go to as much as outwardly as it is inwardly right that journey is within to carrying yourself back to loving yourself unconditionally loving yourself finding falling madly in love with who and what you are that is the path to manifesting all the goodness all the juiciness giving yourself a pat on the back for what you've been through as uh, joey just wrote at right after i decided to do this um of course i had facebook open and in the facebook group which is Positive Heads with an S, by the way. For any of you who aren't there, it's a great place to connect with other amazing P-heads. And uh, yeah, it's just a juicy, wonderful beacon of goodness on Facebook. So um, love to see you there. But anyway, uh, Joey uh, had just posted this in the Facebook group. Hey guys, I really hope that everyone is finding new things to love about themselves, other people, and life in general today. When energies are high, we may feel the need to change or the deep sense of an unsettling urgency. In those moments, let's try to breathe deeply, slow down the mind, and give yourself an abundance of grace. Think about everything you have already gone through. You are awesome. Pat yourself on the back, please. Really. Self-pats are nice. <laughs> I love this. And uh, so I wanted to include it because, of course, it popped up synchronistically right as I'm about to record. And, you know, it's like he started with, I hope everyone is finding new things to love about themselves. That's it. That's the that's the formula. If you are feeling like you're cut off from love and you want to be carried back and it's been tears of a life with no love. Right. It's the question is, is why aren't you loving yourself? <laughs> because that's the doorway to all the reflections that a lot of us get hung up on as the reflection of love in, in, in the form of another, but there really, there are no others, right? So they're going to show up as a reflection of our own self-love. And the truth is, is you are so worthy of love. Each and every one of you is so worthy of love that you, like the story I told, like you actually signed up for the, the, the hardships and the traumas because you, you, you wanted to be of service to source, to God. This is serving God. God, right? You are the the adventurer who says, I love you so much. I'm willing to cut myself off from love and experience the lack of love so that you can, you, i.e. me, because I'm an extension of you, right? We're all extensions of the one, uh, can actually um, have some contrast and, and understand what it means to be this thing called love, right? And it's such a beautiful story. Talk about a story to fall in love with. Who and what you are, that is worthy 
give yourself a pat on the on the back, a, a bunch of pat on the back. You are so brave and so bold and so worthy. And it's time to find our way back to love, right? Enough, enough, enough of the separation. We've done it. We paid the dues. We did it. Congratulations. That was really, really bold of you, right? Uh, as they say, uh, reading the book of Journey of Souls, it talks about, you know, their, their souls, fragments of source, fractals of source, our brothers and sisters on the other side who rarely to never come into uh, 3D to experience separation from source. And they look at us as kind of the crazy adventuresome ones. Like, wow, you guys are willing to be that of service to, to the whole that you're willing to cut yourself off from who and what you are, lose yourself completely and forget that you are love and experience pain and darkness and separation. Wow, you're crazy. <laughs> and you are that we are the crazy ones and the best kinds of way and the good thing is is by playing that role you get to firsthand experience the coming back to love and it me me really impacting you in a way that is giving you that next level experience that source you your higher self longed for and you sort of signed up to be the front lines and you are you know it's an army of love right Uh, army of lovers and you are so worthy (sighs) all right I'd like to uh, play a little clip here from one of my um, favorite teachers who passed a few years ago, back into love, reemerged back into the love from which he had sprung forth from in the past when he was in 3D, uh, living a life here on earth. And um, the, it's Wayne Dyer. And it is uh, a clip called How to Find True Love. It's simple. And uh, I found it on the Action Begins Success YouTube page. Let's take a listen. Don Juan, in his training, in his early training, Don Juan Matus, in his earliest training, had to dress as a woman for two years and disguise himself as a woman and never, ever be found out. If he was ever found out, he had to start the two years over. Just to prove that he had the capacity to disguise himself. Just to have that energy of being able to be male or female. To know that that's not something that's separate from you, but that you have that. This ability to have someone come at you that you don't want to see you and to make yourself invisible to them through the use of your energy body. These are all things that we think, oh, come on, we can't do that. Why are you coming off with that stuff? You're cookie thieves. Because you're stuck in believing there's only one dimension of reality and it is the reality that your senses process and perceive. And you don't understand yet that there are other dimensions of reality and you can at least peer into them. And if you want to do more than just peer into them, you can wander into them. Your life here is like being in one room in a house that has a thousand rooms. And you show up in this one room called daily awareness. And you live in this room you're open, the door opens at your conception and it closes at your death. And you live in this room and you try to figure out a way into the other 999 rooms that constitute potential human awareness. But you can't get in them. Because you're always pushing and pushing and pushing on the walls and looking for an exit out of this dimension that's out there. Somehow this pushing process doesn't work and you just keep pushing against these walls and then you have the insight the awareness and you step back and finally 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 you realize that the doorway out of the limitations of daily awareness opens inward you step back and you allow the door to open and you walk right through and as you walk through you begin to see the ability to manifest, the ability to manage the coincidences of your life, the ability to place your attention on prosperity, on healing, on unconditional love, on kindness, on divine relationships. And you see that energy not just as something that is static and stagnant, but as something that is alive and flowing and moving and connecting everything to everything. It is said that when a butterfly just moves its wings off the coast 
of the United States. It flutters the breezes and the leaves on the islands of Japan. The connection is that subtle. There is nothing that separates you from that divine source except your belief that you are separate from it. And the affirmation for this is I express the energy of unconditional love to all people and all things in my life. Connect to your divinity with unconditional love. The emphasis is on the un. There are no conditions. That the force that we're speaking about here in this program is the force of love. Another word for God is love. Another word for this divine energy, this universal intelligence, is love. Love is the glue that holds everything together. It's the energy within every cell that allows it to stay in place. If you take an electron microscope and you artificially begin to manipulate the electrons inside of an atom and you align a certain number of them, when you reach a certain critical mass number, one-third, one-tenth, whatever that number might be, all of a sudden, all the rest of those electrons within that atom automatically align. They just line up with each other. That force, when you reach a critical mass within an electron, within a subatomic particle, within a molecule, within an atom, within each and every one of us, is this force that Pierre Teilhard de Chardin of Chardin said is the glue that holds everything together in the universe. And being able to do your manifesting requires this kind of commitment to this. I think the most beautiful passage in the entire New Testament is Corinthians 13. I'd like to share it with you. It's something that I read every day. I use it in my talks most of the time. And it really is reflective of how important this principle is. It says these words, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. It seemed to me, as I was writing Manifest Your Destiny and as I was preparing myself for this program, that it would be impossible to not include the necessity of experiencing unconditional love 
even if you just did it for a day, in order to be able to understand its relationship to manifesting. You see, the force that is universal, the force that is divine, the force that we call universal intelligence, the God force that is in all things, is love, which means that you, when you remove yourself from love, remove yourself from the God force, from God, from this divine energy. So that thoughts that you have that take you away from love, thoughts of judgment, remember, it does not judge. It does not keep record of wrongs. It bears no anger, no hatred. This is a very tough thing for those of us who are rooted in the physical domain. To begin to practice this idea of living unconditional love in our lives. It requires removing judgment from ourselves. The thing that is the source of most difficulties in most relationships is this statement that if only you were more like me, then we would be getting along a whole lot better right now. See, if what you think about is what expands, and what you're thinking about is what's missing or what's wrong or what you don't like or what is evil or what is bad in another person, then the relationship has to take that tack, that road, that path. It has to. Because what you think about is what expands. As you think, so shall you be. If you're thinking about what you don't like, then what you don't like is what will expand. So it really requires, if you want to be able to manifest love in your life, or loving relationships in your life, or peace in your life, you have to shift your thoughts to unconditional love. Even when people are behaving in ways toward us that we find offensive. Yeah, very cool. At the beginning, I talked about Don Juan. If if you guys know um, Don Juan, um, I'm pretty sure who he's talking about here is the Don Juan from Carlos Castaneda's books. Um, and you know, I'd never heard that, but becoming a woman for two years, like just to experience variations of energy and understanding sort of this idea. Um, you know, it actually what comes to mind when when um, now right as I think of that. It's like my favorite movies of all times are, are the Matrix trilogy and, uh, you know, the most philosophical, spiritual, like incredible movies. Uh, I love the storyline, love everything about them. And, um, you know, the, the, the writers, the Wachowskis, who I intend to um, sit down with at some point in Soul Share, uh, calling that manifestation in. But the Wachowskis were... Wachowski brothers wrote them and now are the Wachowski sisters, right? They, they've they actually made a transformation, kind of like Don, in their case, they did it as a permanent, not for two years. And I think that's really incredible and it, it made so much sense considering sort of, you know, the Matrix is, it's more philosophy in, and this, this perspective that they shared in the movies, like it's all about binaries, zeros and ones, right? And that's like male and female. And I think it's really interesting when you think of the Matrix and seeing the Matrix, um, you know, uh, and how Neo towards the end, his eyes get burned and you can, he sees all, he just sees like, you know, ones and zeros essentially and now these two that actually made the movie are, have kind of done a one to zero flip-flop right and it's really fascinating just something i've observed and thought about recently i thought i'd share there but uh i digress uh, back to what wayne was saying um you know he it just that your life is 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 mi- mostly been navigated in one room in a house that actually um has a thousand doors a thousand rooms a million rooms and we get so caught in the idea of you know how love should look and what it should appear like and you know how we get it and how and all these things and and so much uh, limitation in our story right and and what wayne said is the doorway out of out of the limitations of daily awareness opens inward 
The doorway out of the limitations of daily awareness opens inward. He said the affirmation, I express, start, ex- start affirming this to yourself. I express the energy of unconditional love to all people and all things in my life right? That is the pathway, accepting exactly where you are, exactly where you stand, knowing this is a perfectly served up delight to take you into the next greatest and grandest version of yourself. I love how he uses, brings in science, how electrons manipulated will ultimately uh, taken out of their original alignment. If you manipulate enough of them, they'll start aligning together when you reach a critical mass. And that's what's happening with us as as beings, as, uh, you know, as, as we all sort of align together in unconditional love, uh, the glue that holds everything together in the universe, as he stated, when we start doing that, all the other electrons are going to start aligning all the other souls. We are, we are doing it. Every person that you help to bring unconditional love to, you are helping to realign them, right? Every person that you touch with your words, you are, Uh, you are helping to realign them. And a lot of times you may not even see it, right? But trust me, it's there like that. If you're bringing potent energy of unconditional love to any experience, especially a trying one, whether they acknowledge it uh, or not, it is like a ripple of impact like that butterfly where the wings that you just fluttered are going to send shockwaves through their being. It's a seed that cannot be stopped that will sprout. You know, I love how he said uh, unconditional love's relationship to manifesting. You know, he talked about that. It's, it's basically, he was saying it was paramount. Like this is, this is everything. If you want to manifest, that's the, that's the, the, you know, clay from which you manifest everything. And if you're not cultivating that and you're not resonating with that, then if there's judgment and agitation and, and self-deprecation and judging where you are or where you're not and something's wrong and all of that, you're, you're clipping your wings of manifestation, right? Unconditional love and acceptance uh, is it. I think back uh, many, many years ago, there was, um, I don't know if it's still around, there was a, uh, for like a month, there was this phenomenon called chat roulette. Some of you may remember it. I want to say it was around 2010, maybe, where people would just randomly connect their their webcams and you just hit next, 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 and you'd just be connected with someone and, you know... I, I, you know, here I'm here in California. I hit next, and all, all of a sudden, I'm looking at someone in Russia, and I, Russia, and I could talk to them. Or then I hit next, and it'd be someone in Idaho, or you know, and you just kind of go through and connect with people. And I remember one time I came across. Uh, I've told this story before, but I'll share it again. It's been a while. I came across someone, and they had set up this elaborate uh, view. As soon as my, you know, what I was seeing on their camera was like the Satanic Bible and all this dark stuff, and it was like, you know solve my riddle and I'll save your soul. And uh, the riddle was, what has no conditions but one condition? And instantly the answer came to me, and uh, maybe it's instantly came to you. Uh, The answer, what has no conditions but one condition? Unconditional love, right? (laughs) It has no conditions. The only conditions is that it's unconditional. And uh, instantly when I answered it, it was so fun. He like, the guy like, took off his mask, removed what I was seeing and said, oh my gosh, you got the answer. Finally, I've been doing this for like four hours, five hours, something like that. And no one's gotten it and you got it. And then we had this great conversation and, you know, it was all props that he had set up, like just to see if someone would get the answer. And uh, it was really fun, really, really cool. It's always stuck with me. So I'll leave that unconditionally loving story to you all. Well, that's not the only thing I'll leave you with. I'm going to leave you with a song as well called Come Back to Love by Fia. Shared Fia before. I'll share Fia again. She is lovely. (laughs) Count the loves. How many loves did I say in this lovely podcast? A lot. (sighs) Till next time, journey well. Love you so, so much. Love, love, love. Also, before we queue up today's song, I wanted to let you all know that we have finally created the Game with the Universe on our website, where you can choose the first number that comes to your mind, and it'll pull up that episode number of the podcast. I've been saying this is a great way to co-create synchronicity and magic with your higher self for quite some time by doing this manually. But now, if you go to positivehead.com, forward slash Y-O universe. There is a super fun and simple interface to play this game with your higher self. 
I firmly believe just by setting the intention to play in this way, it opens up the door for magic and it's a synchronistic way to hone in on nuggets of wisdom out of the huge catalog of episodes that are specifically appropriate for you at this time in your journey to becoming the next greatest and greatest version of yourself. And it also makes for a super fun way to engage and invite friends, family, people on social media to check out the podcast as well. So be sure to check out positivehead.com forward slash Y-O-U-N-I-V-E-R-S-E and be sure to tell all your friends so they can play a game with the universe, which also helps the show to reach new people, which I greatly appreciate. And as a quick reminder, be sure to also check out positivehead.com forward slash transformation if you're curious to learn more about Purium Superfoods and why I take them every day. On this journey of becoming the next greatest and greatest version of ourselves that we have all embarked upon, I can't stress the importance of managing your physical vibration enough. And quite honestly, Purium has put together the simplest plan I've found to do so, and I'm sincerely excited to share it with all of you. Lastly, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. Calling all my sisters and brothers. It's time to rise. We are birthing this new earth together. Making a shift from me to we Cause power lies in community Let's be clear and focused And get going How do we want it to be? Where do we put our energy? Every thought and feeling Is a creator Let our hearts lead the way Each moment back to love Everyone's needed if things are to change It's the only way Intention paired with action sparks the flame Look at the treasures you carry within That special gift only you can bring Share it with the world This is the medicine And how do we want it to be? Where do we put our energy? Every thought and feeling is a creator. Let our hearts lead the way. Each moment of the day. And whenever in doubt, come back to love. Come back to love. Are you ready? How do we want it to be? Where do we put our energy? Every thought and feeling is a creator. How do we want it to be? Where do we put our energy? Every thought and feeling is a creator. love.